Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. I'm One Bar with Lupicus. The first round is officially in the books, and I have some beer debris here that I just need to mention right off the bat so nobody's wondering what this is. I thought you were lactating from your upper shoulder area. Nope, that is a little bit of spillage, and it smells delicious, but not as delicious as this first round shook out. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about some surprises, some steals, and just uh, overall thoughts on this first round. And before we before we get into that, let's be so, make something very clear. Vikings nailed it. Uh, well, yeah, I mean they they worked the board, massively. nailed it. They didn't what work Rick the board. Spielman did um, to get down to where he did, get some extra picks, and still get a guy you're probably gonna take anyway at 14 was something uh, they're gonna make movies about. Draft day two will be about what he just did. Nailed it. Um, all right, first, before we go, let's, just, let's look at the NFC North first. Let's look at the new faces in the, in the NFC North. First of all, you got the Detroit Lions at pick seven. Uh, Dan Campbell wants to be a physical team, wants to bite you in the knees. He brought in Panay Sewell. Um, what do you think with that move? Every time you say his name, you mention you, you say it differently. I, mean, I love that. Oh, yeah, and, and I will continue to do that. Uh, no, it was a great move. Uh, the, the Lions were a team that looked at could go in a many directions, but they took the best player available. And uh, they, this is a great step in helping Jared Goff be the Jared Goff that they hope they traded for. So great move. I don't like it as a Vikings fan, but it was a very good, very good pick. It was a great pick. You know, there were some options there. They could have got a sexy receiver, but they went the old line route, made a lot of sense. Great value for the Lions. Then they got the freaking Bears trading up to, what was it, 11, 12? 11. To get Justin Fields. Um, hated that move. I was kind of hoping he'd be there for the Vikings. Now you got to deal with Justin Fields twice a year for the next. I mean, I don't know if it's going to start next year. It may not start till 2022, but how do you feel about facing Justin Fields twice a year? moving forward? Uh, I think Justin Fields is a guy that's going to take a little bit of time to get to the point where he's maybe the Justin Fields. They hope he gets. Uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to facing him for the first couple of years because I think he's going to have a quite a few bumps in the road, but. Um, he could be a guy that's very good, but in the meantime, I'll look forward to taking advantage of his youngness. Yeah, I think there's gonna be some uh, some rough patches here for the guy, but man, if he hits his potential, if he reaches his ceiling, uh, he's a gamer. He's gonna be a guy. He's gonna be like Aaron Rodgers, where the game's never done until you know you don't want the ball in his hands with a minute left on the clock. Wow, I already compared him to Aaron Rodgers. That's bold. I'm just saying he's that type of talent if he reaches his potential. Uh, yeah. So you know. And speaking of the Packers, uh, they did make a pick at 29. They <laughs> added cornerback Eric Stokes. Eric Stokes. I was giggling the whole time. I mean, Aaron Rodgers comes out with this big news. He wants to be traded. Like, hey, you know what? Let's get on his good side. Let's go get Elijah Moore. Let's do something fantastic. No, they take Eric Stokes, who was pretty much looked at as a second-round guy. I mean, that they they I think they take cornerbacks more than the Vikings. Loved it laughed Aaron Rodgers suck it I did it was it was one of the grosser picks of the draft but um I mean he was always going to be a fringe first rounder second round early mid second round guy so uh where he went off I wasn't overly shocked uh he's really fast I guess he's just a really fast guy but um you got Rondale Moore there you got Elijah Moore there Terrace Marshall and you still go with the corner um again the way the Packers draft I'll never understand it. I'm not going to try to understand it. I don't want to understand it. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. Yeah, the Packers, they I mean, personally if I'm if I'm looking at a cornerback, I'm looking at Asante Samuel before him um and really Atlanta Dickerson. Uh there was there was a lot of other players that made more sense for the Packers, but the it wasn't crazy value. It's just a weird weird pick, which I love. So, that's the NFC North. Let's let's look at the draft as a whole. Um, really, when you look at look at at least the first half of it, there wasn't anything overly crazy. No, there was one pick that was freaking disgusting, and we all knew it was coming. When the Raiders were on the clock, well, um, that was later. I said, this is going to be gross, and it was. At pick 17, they said, we got to get Alex Leatherwood, and we got to take him now. And uh, Mel Kuyper was not kind uh, when they were on the clock. When they were after they made the pick, he uh, pretty much said that was a huge reach, and it was. It was a huge reach. Yeah, no, that that one was gross. But as far as like the first 15 picks or so, nothing crazy whatsoever. The Patriots get a steal with Mac Jones. All the all the shows you're watching, all the draft shows are saying like 
best case scenario, leave it to the Patriots. Just get this guy to fall on his lap. Sure enough, it happened. Uh, Micah Parsons to the Cowboys, a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, Rashawn Slater flirting with the Vikings. The word, the thing, what we said did not want to happen, happened. He was there right before the Vikings picked, and sure enough, Chargers snap him up. Uh, the one pick that surprised me in the top 10 was Sertan going to the Broncos at nine. After the, what they added in free agency, I didn't think they were going to address the cornerback position anymore. So that was going to be more of a Micah Parsons kind of a pick or a quarterback. Um, to me, that was the one that surprised me early. Uh, then you get the Giants trading out, and then they go back and take Kadarius Tony at, at, I think it was 20, which um, I thought was a hair early for Tony. I do like him, but um, I picked 20. I thought it was a little rich. Yeah, I always had Tony pegged. 20 to the bears so uh wrong team right pick uh let's talk about jc horn i mean he went before patrick Sertain. that was a pretty big surprise uh and to the panthers so panthers while they were flirting with the cornerback position wasn't really like they're gonna take a corner and they took one and it wasn't even Sertain. well it makes you wonder uh if they're regretting the sam darnold trade because they could have had justin fields um they went ahead and they made the move. They get Darnold, and now they got to see. I mean, they're going to live or die by Darnold the next couple of years. That whole coaching staff, front office has got to go with Darnold, and uh, we'll see if it was the right move or not. But um, I, yeah, they went corner instead. So with JC Horn, and again, I, I think the Sertan Horn thing. Uh, I know the Cowboys are looking at both, and it was very, very close for them as well. So I don't, I don't think that was a, like a reach or anything. I think they were both ranked very similarly. Yeah, and I, I actually think they're all in on Darnold because he's a cheap option. They didn't pick up his contract. So, I mean, if they wanted fields, they would have took him. So, I think they're all in on him. They're they're adding some weapons on defense to help him out. But um, that was a, a good one. Zayvon Collins, 16, seemed a little bit early. Jalen yep. Phillips. When Jalen Phillips went 18 to the Dolphins, all the worries in the world were instantly wiped away. as like I had a clean, fresh body. It was like a load wiped off your back. It was very uh, relaxing, refreshing to get that guy off the board. Um, not to worry about that injury history, that lengthy injury history of his. Um, another guy, you know, there were some guys who lasted longer than I thought. They were Greg Newsom was a guy I thought might go earlier than expected. Uh, I think he went all the way to 26 to the Browns. Uh, he was one that I really thought was going to come off the board earlier. And you got like Aziz Ojolari, who I thought was going to be a guy who would be kind of a sneaky pick in the mid-20s, still on the board. Um, so some surprising moves as well. Christian Barmore still available. And maybe we should just maybe touch on who is still there because there's some good good guys still going around two now. Yeah, and a couple a couple other things I want to hit on. Caleb Farley goes 22. Definitely fell further, but uh, 22 is actually a little bit earlier than I thought. Najee Harris, guy's just been linked to the Steelers this whole time. Match made in heaven there. Uh, Jaguars give... Uh, Lawrence, a, a running back. Um, Bateman, our Minnesota Gopher, thankfully went 27, killing any doubt that he'd go to the, the Packers. Peyton Turner. Peyton Turner was a shocking pick. <laughs> yeah, well, the Saints took him. Yeah, you got you got a really good run stopping the end. Congratulations. That was worth the first round pick. Well, Peyton Turner can get after the quarterback. Nice. And then uh, I think Greg Russo was a little early at 30. I think he's more of a second yeah, round was, guy. That was maybe when the steals the draft, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not feeling then I heard, that. Then I heard I, him I, talk I to some of those other wasn't edge excited. rushers before him. Well, that's why you're not a GM. Uh, Jason Owe, pretty good. And Joe Tryon, Buccaneers just love adding those linebackers. So, yeah. Um, so again, there was there were so many of those guys that you know. There's literally 20 guys you could have seen going the back end of the first. You could go somewhere to the mid second. So a few of those did go off the board. A few of them didn't. Um, I mean, really, to me, the most surprising. I really thought Trayvon Murray would have been a first round pick. I, I mean, I wouldn't have shocked me to see him go 14, 17, um, somewhere in the 20s. But he's still there in round two. Uh, who's the other one I was thinking? Oh, Zizo Jolari again. I'm not an edge rusher. Uh, this guy can bend. He's kind of a violent pass rusher. I thought some team would have snapped him up. He's still available. So. Uh, you're looking for the favorites to come off the board first tomorrow. I think those are two guys that could be very, very early picked uh, tomorrow. Yeah, my number one guy available is Elijah Moore. Um, very surprised he didn't go in round one. I thought he was just going to be one of those sneaky guys that actually go in the late teens. Tevin Jenkins, Christian Barmore, yeah. uh, the Joker, um, Asante Samuel Jr. I thought he was going to sneak in the round one. So uh, there's a there's a handful of guys that I think were very, very – worthy of that first round pick and and it's gonna be interesting to see what happens early in round two i could see a lot of trades happening 
Um, as far as the Vikings are concerned, we got all those thirds now. We got the fourth still. Uh, we're going to be doing an episode on this right away in the morning as far as some possible guys that could trade up in round two. But I think it's fair to say the Vikings are going to be looking to get in the round two because there's some damn good players there. Yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to just – who's the best edge rusher right now? I mean, Ojalari doesn't really fit our thing, our scheme as much as I would uh, like. So I'm trying to think who it would maybe look – Ronnie Perkins, for. Boogie Basham. Maybe uh, Boogie Basham, but – um. You know, look at the safeties. I think Mulrig is a guy the Vikings can move up to look to get. Uh, and maybe they want to keep going O-line and look at a, a Wyatt Davis, someone like that. So I think that's definitely in play for the Vikings. But I, I, I would I'd be more surprised if they sat on their laurels and did not move up in the round two to get, um, to get someone they love. So they got the ammunition to do it. Yeah, I think uh, they got the likes of Landon Dickerson, Quinn Miners, Ooh. Wyatt Davis. Uh, they're licking their chops at those guys that double dip in that re- at – offensive line and still even after they trade up in the round two they're still going to have a handful of third and fourth so uh win 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 i hope it happens uh like i said though check out tomorrow morning we're going to have an episode strictly on that and i'm hard wait i don't believe you (laughs) are you (laughs) all right well probably a good time to end it here um you know what that was the that was you know as far as drama, maybe it was the most exciting first round we've ever witnessed, but there was a couple of good trades. Vikings moved down. Uh, again, Spielman played the board very, very well. Vikings and, killed it. You know, it, it, later there was a couple of surprise picks that uh, made you giggle. So overall, you know, I, I, it was an enjoyable draft. Uh, but until then, remember this. Until tomorrow morning, remember this. Pigeons cannot fart. Oh.